Adventures in Murfreesboro is produced in cooperation with Murfreesboro City Schools. study this history stuff. Oh, history? History is awesome, Murph. What time period are you reading about? Are you cray-cray, dude? Uh, history is not awesome. It's old and dry and boring, and, and I'm studying the Civil War period. History's not boring, Murph. It's, it's just about people that lived a long time ago and stuff nobody cares about anymore. Oh, Murph, I don't agree. The people back then are as real as people here today. People back then are nothing like me, John. In the pictures, they look all weird. Well, it's true that they did wear some funny clothes back then, but people back then are just as real as you and I. Uh, right. You know, I think we need to take a trip to the Heritage Center. Why? So you can see that people back then are not very different from you and I. <laughs> oh, well, okay, if you think it'll help. I do, Murph. Hey. Why don't you come, too? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, what's this, Miss Sarah Beth? Are we gonna put on a puppet show? No, not today, Murph. This is actually, we are looking inside a window here at one of our scenes here in our permanent exhibit about the Civil War. This is a diary set up here on a table that was taken from a girl who actually lived in Murfreesboro during the Civil War. Wow, is that her real diary? No, this is just a replica that we've made here. So, so that looks like what it really looked like. Well, it is written in cursive, and that's how she would have written back in the 1860s. What is a diary, anyway? A diary is a journal where you keep your thoughts and feelings and talk about what you do on, during the day. Oh, we do a lot of that at school. Do you now? Yeah, we journal about a lot of things. That's pretty cool. So people have been journaling a long time. A very long time, Murph. Oh, okay. Well, what else can we see? Well, let's go over to the tent. Okay. Well, I feel like we're on a great adventure. I'm ready to sing my camping song. Kumbaya, my friend. Oh, you sing too. Kumbaya, kumbaya, kumbaya my friend. Kumbaya. Uh, that's all the words I know. Okay, okay. Uh, what is this place? This is actually another of our scenes from our permanent exhibit. This is a soldier's tent. Oh, soldiers from what? from the Civil War, they didn't actually spend all of their time fighting. A lot of their time was spent in camp. Well, and what would they do when they were in camp? Well, they'd play games just like we do, like dominoes, or they could play cards. Right, wow. Or they played baseball. This is actually a rule book from the baseball game. Well, that sounds cool. Oh my goodness, and, and what's that? This thing, right here. Oh, this is actually a canteen. They held water in it. Water, is there any water in it now? I don't think so. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so kids can come here and they can crawl in the tent and they can pretend? Yes, they can. They can play with the cards. They can play with dominoes. They can get in there and play around with all of our stuff. How fun is that? It is the Heritage Center of Murfreesboro and Rutherford County. Yeah. Well, you know, John, it was kind of cool looking out that window and imagining watching a battle. You're right, Murph. And the tent the dominoes game was really neat. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, the tent looked just like the tents we use at Boy Scouts. So, Marv, do you still feel like those people are weird and different from you? Uh, I don't know. Maybe not so much. It is strange to think there was a Civil War battle right here in Murfreesboro. I wish I could see some more stuff from that time period. It helps me understand it all. Then I know just the place we need to visit, Murph. You do? Yes, I do. Oh, where is it? Is it Oakland's? Uh, uh, the courthouse? The battlefield? No, those are all great places, Murph. But this is a place that we've never been before. <laughs> really? Really. Hey, hey, can I take my friends with me? What? Oh, your friends? Sure, they can come too. Oh, did you hear that? Y'all can come too? Oh, how far away is it? It's in Nashville. Nashville, or, or what I like to call Nash Vegas. Oh, we're going to Nash Vegas. We're going to Nash Vegas. Hey, hey, can I drive? No. Oh, why not? Murph, you're too young to drive. Oh, I can drive. I'm a good driver. Murph, you can't even see over the dashboard, and you don't have a license. So? So, I'm going to be driving. Uh, okay, but I get to pick the radio station. It's a deal. Hi, Murph. Welcome to the Tennessee State Museum. Oh, hi, Mr. Jim. I'm so excited to be here. <gasps> this place is so big. Well, it, there's a lot to see here, and we're so excited to have you today. We're going to show you all around this wonderful exhibit that we have here, and we're going to explore it and discover lots of things about the Civil War. Oh, the Civil War. How long will this exhibit be here, Mr. Jeff? Well, this, this exhibit will be here all through the summer, so you can come up, bring your parents with you, uh -huh. and come up and see it through September 1st. Well, so you've got some time, uh, so come on up and check it out. It's a great thing to do this summer, isn't it? Absolutely. Okay, what's the first thing we should go see today? Well, today we have a really, really special exhibit that we're going to show you. It's all the way from Washington, D.C. It's from the National Archives. The archives is where we keep, the nation keeps all of our treasures. <gasps> Things like uh, old photographs, Ooh. old letters and documents Ooh. and things. And all of these things together help us to learn about the past. And well, I was yeah. wondering, why is it important to keep these old documents and letters and things? That's a fabulous question, Merv. What it does is it helps all of us to learn more about what happened in the past and what people thought okay. and what, what they experienced and all of the things that happened, especially like today in the Civil War. Uh -huh. We're going to learn, and as you know, from your town, Murfreesboro, we're going to learn all about some of the things <gasps> that happened during the Civil War to the people that were living in Murfreesboro <gasps> back in those days. Did you hear that, John? We're going to learn things about the borough. I know. I'm excited. Oh, oh, that sounds good, Mr. Jeff. Well, lead the way. All right, come on, let's go. Oh, look at this, Mr. Jeff. Is this a family tree? Well, not exactly, Murph. This is a. Uh, this is a, a sort of a, a, a diagram that shows us how all of these people in the Civil War, both North and South, were connected to each other. Oh! This is a great way to learn more about these people by looking at what would essentially be a Facebook page here. It's got all of his interests, where he was educated, where he worked. He worked at, or uh, was educated at the United States Military Academy in 1844. You can look at some of his friends and his connections. Uh, this is a Confederate connection that was a friend of his before the war, but ultimately joined the Confederacy and they ended up being enemies uh, during the war. Uh -huh. uh, and when this war started, they became uh, enemies because they fought on different sides, but yet they still knew each other and they still cared for one another even though the war was raging around them. You know, it's important to remember that we can still be friends though we disagree on some political issues. Absolutely, that's a great lesson to take from this. And, and many of these guys, even though they were fighting against each other in the battle, still were friends after the battle was over. Oh, that's good. Oh, Mr. Jeff, is this some kind of toy? Well, you know, it looks kind of like a toy, Murph, but actually this is a very, very secretive and important tool that, Union, or that Civil War soldiers would use to keep their very important secrets. Secrets. Oh, well, how, how did it all work? Well, one thing in the Civil War and in any 
wars is information is very important okay. and you never wanted to have your enemies learn your secrets okay Ooh. so this what it would do is you you see the different numbers here uh -huh. you see that has numbers all around it has letters in the inside of those numbers you would match up if you and I uh -huh. uh, knew which numbers matched which letters we could turn this uh, what's called a cipher disk. Cipher could, disk. Yes, yeah, cipher. You've heard of the word maybe decipher. Uh -huh. well, this <gasps> is a cipher disk to <gasps> decipher secret codes. Ooh, ooh, I could be like a spy, like, That's like right. Murph. Murph Bond. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah, the yeah. sound of that, yeah, Murph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. If you had one of these, you could be a Civil War spy. Ooh. But you did not want this to fall into the wrong hands. No. Because then they could decode all of your secret messages. Decipher. That's right. Decipher. Okay. So we saw the cipher wheel. And now we're looking at this letter. I don't understand everything it says. Ah, that's right. Remember I said that those messages were put in secret code? <laughs> well, this is an, this shows us a message that has been put into secret code that you would need one of those cipher disks to use in order to fully read this letter. Could you read us just part of the letter? Sure. Let me show you where it gets a little confusing for us, okay? okay. It says, General Braggs informs me that a telegram from Louisville of the 10th says that part of the 9th Corps have been sent to reinforce Grant. We can read that easily, uh -huh. okay? But it gets a little tougher here. Will not this enable us to, U-N-J-E-K, C X N K V N E D. Huh? It makes my head spin around, <laughs> Mr. Jeff. We don't know what they're talking about because it's put in secret code here. Ooh, yeah. I kind of like it, that secret code stuff. We may have to try that, John. Sounds good, Murph. Okay, and, and the name Bragg. You know, our mayor is named Mayor Bragg. Mayor Tommy Bragg. Hey, Mayor, how are ya? <laughs> Yeah. Well, this refers to the General Bragg, who was all throughout Middle Tennessee, including Murfreesboro. Mm. That's oh, right. It's cool. Okay, what next? All right, we're going to go see a very, very important document. Now, is this one of those documents you were telling us about? Yeah, this is a document, okay? And it has all of this writing on it, but the writing is what's so important here, because this writing is what made millions and millions of people free. Uh, the slaves that were in the South, uh -huh. this declared those slaves who were still uh, in the southern states, that were still fighting uh, against the United States, this declared that those slaves were free. Wow. So what's this document called? This document's called the Emancipation Proclamation. You may have heard of President Abraham Lincoln. Oh, sure. Yeah, Abraham Lincoln uh, is the one who wrote this document and signed his signature here to the last page up here at the top. If you look closely way up there, you see that? I do, I do see it. Yeah, there it is. That's Abraham Lincoln's signature. Uh, and this is the document uh, that is one of the most important documents in all of American history. Well. Are there other important documents here? Yes, as a matter of fact, Murph, this is just one of the two most important documents that this exhibit has. Okay. This is the Emancipation Proclamation. Emancipation Proclamation, boy, that's a mouthful, isn't it? It is, and it's kind of fun to say. Yeah. The other one is the 13th Amendment. Ooh, 13th. Yeah, 13th Amendment. It's really, really neat. Let's go check it out. Okay. So what exactly is the 13th Amendment? The 13th Amendment, Murph, this is the one that makes it constitutional. That means it, it makes it law across all of the United States that no longer can anyone be slaves ever again in our country. So this is the really, really powerful document that makes slavery uh, end in the United States forever. Forever and always. That's right, that's right. And it has Abraham Lincoln's signature on it. Ooh. And he was our 16th president, wasn't he? That's right. Oh. He's, the, he's the guy, he's the president that led us through the Civil War. And, and he wore those funny hats, too. Yeah, the big, tall, stove pipe top hat. Would you like a hat like that? I would love to wear a hat oh. like that Hey, hey graphic guys, see what you can do for Jeff <laughs> with the hat, yeah. Mr. 
Mr. Jeff, why is the important document in the 13th Amendment in a book? You know, Murph, we've had so many people ask us that question. Believe it or not, it was just a congressional act, a law that was passed by our Congress uh -huh. that uh, all of those congressional acts are bound into a book. Oh, and I see there's different kinds of writing on the paper. Absolutely. If you look very closely, you can see that several people actually took part in writing it. Now, the reason why they did that was because they all wanted to have their own hand in writing this very, very important document. Mr. Jeff, why is it so dark in those cases? Why don't they put a nice light in there so I can see it better? <laughs> well, that's a good question. But the reason why is light can actually damage those old, old documents. Oh. See, they, over time, just like the sun fades out your shirt mm -hmm. or, some, or anything, the light can do the same thing with those old pieces of paper. And so we want these documents to be around for uh, 150 more years, don't we? Right, we sure do, so we have to protect them. Oh, there are so many things to see in your exhibit. Have you got anything from around my part of the country? Oh, we certainly do. One of my favorite things in the entire Civil War collection is a very special flag from none other than Woodbury, Tennessee. <gasps> Woodbury? I got some cousins out in Woodbury. <laughs> yeah, that's not too far away from Murfreesboro, is it? No siree, oh. Bob. Well, this flag here is very special because it has on it some writing. Writing? Yeah, writing. And it comes from the uh, ladies who, who made the flag. Not only did they make it for their husbands and fathers and brothers and sons who were uh -huh. going off to fight. Right. Yeah, but they actually signed their names to the flag. They signed, the ladies signed their names? Can you read the writing? You certainly can. You can read it and you can see where each woman signed their names uh -huh. so that they would send a little piece of this themselves off to fight with their loved ones. Ooh. Yeah, and if you look very closely, they uh -huh. left you a little note along the side of the flag. What does it say? Can you read it to us? Yeah, I certainly can. Okay, if you look really closely, you can see it says, presented to the St. John Guards by the ladies of Woodbury on the 20th of May, 1861. May the brave boys who march under the stars of this banner, may they bear it triumphantly under the roar of cannons and the clash of arms. The roar of cannons and the clash of arms. Ooh, that gives me the shivers. Those ladies worked hard on that flag, didn't they? They certainly did, and this went into the Battle of Fort Donelson and was captured there. Do you have more things from around my part of the borough? Oh, absolutely. We've got lots of things from around Murfreesboro. Okay, like what? Well, let's go check them out. Okay. All right, now this, this ex uh, artifact right here is one of m the more powerful artifacts in the entire museum. It is a human hip bone. And if you look very closely at it, you can see that there is a bullet lodged Eww. inside of the bo bone. That means that someone got hit by that bullet uh, right in the hip. <laughs> that comes right from, uh, we believe, from the battle at Stones River. Ooh. Uh, what's that cloth? Now this is called uh, a housewife. And what a housewife is... That doesn't a... look like a housewife. <laughs> well, that's right. This is a, a sewing kit. And oh. sorry, ladies, but that's what they associated with housewives at the time. Okay. That's why they gave it the nickname, uh, uh, housewife. Why did, the, why did the soldiers have sewing kits? Well, because it was they, they, if they tore a hole in their uh, uniform, right. they had to sew it up. Ha, 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 fellas. That's right. So if their housewife wasn't with them to sew it up, they, this was the next best thing. And believe it or not, that was found at the Battle of Stones River as well. Wow! Who so many cool things. And now over here, what happened to the poor tree? This is a very old tree, and this tree actually witnessed the Battle of Nashville. Oh. Now, you can see that it witnessed it by looking really closely, and you can see pieces of iron fragments that are lodged inside of it. 
Wow, is that from a battle? Yeah, that's from cannonballs exploding all around that tree, and they exploded with such force that they lodged that metal inside of that tree. I'm glad it was a tree and not a person. Absolutely. It would not be good to be standing next to that tree during that battle. No. And look at that coat. Uh, it looks like it would fit a child. That's right. Those uniforms, they were meant to really uh, keep you straight and keep your posture very straight. And yeah, people were a bit thinner uh, than they are today. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to give up on those carrots a little bit, at least the carrot cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and oh, I see more things down here. What's that big round thing? Well, that is a very rare Confederate canteen. It's made out of cedar. Cedar? Yeah, lots of cedars around M Murfreesboro. Yeah, we used to have a big cedar bucket there. That's right. So a lot of these Confederate soldiers would make their canteens out of that cedar. That canteen, unfortunately, was found uh, by uh, at, with a Confederate soldier that had been killed at the Battle of Franklin. Giddy up, 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 giddy up. Now, oh. now, Murph, uh -huh. uh, we're happy that you're so excited to be here at the museum, but you, we have to remember these are very, very old artifacts. We want to take care of them. Now, yeah. what you're sitting on here is an actual cannon from the Civil War. Ooh. Okay? You mean this was in a battle? Yes, this big cannon right here fired shots during the Civil War. Ooh. Yeah, so we have to always remember, we always love to explore and discover in the museum, but we also remember we want to take care of these so that our generations of MRFs can come down to the Tennessee State Museum and see these wonderful treasures. Oh, well, that's right. I'll be very careful and not touch anything without permission. That's great. Thank you, Merv. Okay. And, and you know, thank you so much for showing us around this awesome place. There's so much more to see. Hey, I had a blast today, Murph. This is a fantastic uh, thing that you came down here to see the State Museum, and I'm so happy you brought all your friends with you, and we'd love to take you and show you around some more. There's so many more things to discover. Oh, did you hear that, Doug? We might be able to come back one day. That'd be great, Murph. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what we say in the borough. What's that? You the bunny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come to the Tennessee State Museum free like all people. What a place! I didn't know Nashville had such an awesome museum. I know, Murph. We'll have to come back sometime. Oh, there's so much to see. You're right, Murph, but now it's time to head back home. Uh, maybe we should get something to eat on the way home. <laughs> hey, that's a great idea, Murph. Hey, I wonder what kind of snacks kids in the Civil War ate. Oh, you know, we should check with Google it. That's a great idea. I'll pull her up on my phone. Ooh, ooh, John's getting high tech on me. <laughs> oh, there she is. Hi, Googlehead. Hi, Googlehead. Ooh, hey, hey, could you tell us a snack food that might have been eaten by kids during the Civil War period? Bonjour, my little bunny friend, and of course, Jean. But of course I can help you. Let me see now. Ah, may we? Oui. Here's one you may like. You have heard of the gingerbread, have you not? Uh, gingerbread? Yes, of course! In the middle of the 1800s, gingerbread was a well-beloved snack. It had the cake-like consistency and was often served warm. Ooh, that sounds yummy. Ooh, oh, I wonder if, I wonder if my grand bunny would let us use her kitchen again. You know, it's not cake, but she has a great gingerbread cookie recipe that's easy to make. That sounds great, Murph. Hey, you come too. Are you all ready to make my great grand bunny's favorite gingerbread cookie recipe, John? I'm ready, Murph. Let's get started. Okay, first thing is we take three quarters of a cup of softened butter, three quarters of a cup of packed brown sugar, one egg, and one small package of jello butterscotch instant pudding. Now you take the mixer, and this yes. you should have the grown ups do, right? Right. You mix it mm -hmm. until it's all mixed up good. Now then, we have to mix our dry ingredients. Okay, what do we need? Two cups of 
regular flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of ground ginger, and one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon. Now, add the dry ingredients to your wet ingredients a little bit at a time and mix it up. Is that right, Murph? It looks all crumbly. Yeah, that's just right. And we're ready for one of the really fun parts now. Oh, good. What's that? Well, if you have absolutely perfectly clean hands, then you start working with the dough and forming it into a ball. Oh, okay. Kind of like you do Play-Doh. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like Play-Doh. And so anyway, after you've got a nice ball formed, mm -hmm. then you take some plastic wrap, cover your bowl lightly. Okay. Okay, now you just stick it in the fridge for about an hour. All right, Murph. Oh, oh look at there. It looks good. Now what do we do? Well, you break it into, oh, maybe thirds and, and work on it in small batches. What we need to do is put some flour or confectionery sugar on our board. Okay. That, that keeps the dough from sticking too much. All right. Okay, now what? Okay, now we need the dough. Grab the dough. All right. Oh, look at that. Okay, it looks a little dry, doesn't it? Yeah, just a little bit. So if you wet your hands, that gives you just enough moisture. Oh, okay. Now you start kneading the dough and flipping it over. Kneading it and flipping it, kneading it and flipping it. Yeah, that, that gets the flour all around so it doesn't stick. Now what do we do, Murph? You see that wax paper there? I see it. Okay, grab that wax paper. Okay. And here's a little trick. Lay yes. it on top of the dough. On top of the dough, okay. Yeah. Now grab your rolling pin. All right. And you see, you can roll without dough sticking to your rolling pin too much. Okay. Okay. All right. Now start rolling. You want to roll it out in all directions, about a quarter of an inch thick. Be very careful lifting the paper. Okay, gently, I'll be gently. very oh. careful. Look at there, oh, Mark. We're ready to cut some cookies, dude. All right, let's cut some cookies. I, I need out some cookie cutters. <laughs> see those cookie cutters? Ooh, I, I like see the those. Heart. You like the heart? You want to do the heart? Yeah, let's do okay. the heart. And, and there's an apple and a yeah. flower. Let's do the apple and the heart and the flower. The apple, the heart, and the flower. Okay. Yeah. All see, right. Now push down real hard. There you go. All righty. Oh, yeah, Ooh, now you can that. just leave that one there. Okay. And get the, and do the apple. One. Yeah, yeah. We'll do the apple next. Okay. Good, 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 All good. All right. And now the flower. And now the flower. We'll do the flower right up here. That's my sister's favorite one. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. What's your sister's name? Uh, Bunnykins. Bunnykins, I like that. <laughs> you know, you can make ornaments for your kitchen or, or for people or for Christmas trees or anything with the heart one. See that straw I have over there? I see it. Okay, you take it and make a hole in the cookie. Like here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Make a hole. And then after it bakes, you can tie a ribbon through it. Oh, that's a great idea, Marv. Now we have to put the cookies on our cookie sheet. Okay, we'll do the apple. Apple. And the flour for Bunnykins. <laughs> And the heart, right there. Oh, shall we show them how to decorate? Let's do it, Murph. Okay, I've got some candies and some colored sugar. Or, or people can use icing, too. Okay. We stick it in the oven that's preheated on 350 degrees for about eight or nine or 10 minutes, depending on your oven. These are so good. You're right, Murph, in an old fashioned kind of way. You know, John, I feel differently about history now. What do you mean, Murph? Well, history's not some boring old thing anymore. It's like an exciting story. I mean, look at the word history. If you break it apart, it says high story. So it's like saying hi to a great story. Hi story. That's funny, Murph, but also kind of cool. Only you would come up with that, Murph. Only you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? We've got to thank everybody. I, I want to sure thank do. all the great folks at the Tennessee State Museum. And Jennifer Butts and all the people who helped us at the Heritage Center. And, of course, we don't want to forget my... Grand Bunny. That's right. Thanks, Grand Bunny. Thanks, Grand Bunny. Yum, 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 yum. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.